We've all seen pros pull off some insane lurk plays like this one. Not really going to get away with anything for now. How? No, no, but no, no, but how? How? How is he there? How does he manage to do that? And oh, he's going to get a kill on Big Sauce. What is this man doing? Oh, G2, my heart goes out. You are playing Gambit's game at this point. Nats, he's even come on. Oh, he's come up behind for the third kill. He's come up behind for the third kill. Pros make lurking look so easy. So why is it that when you try it, it never seems to work? The answer to that isn't exactly black and white. There is no formula for lurking. And just like with many other concepts in Valorant, there is a heavy dose of nuance. What works one time may not work another, even if the scenarios seem nearly identical. In this video, we're going to go over some powerful lurk plays on each map so you can lurk like the pros. I'm chill and let's get into it. So what exactly is a lurk and why do it? In its simplest form, lurking is putting yourself in an advantageous position away from your team in order to gain information or get kills on unsuspecting enemies. Generally, controllers and sentinels are the best lurk agents since they don't need to be near an area to use their abilities. This means they can show presence or use their utility in a different place from where they are physically. Some of the best lurk agents are Viper, Omen, Killjoy, and Cypher, but that doesn't mean other agents can't lurk. Just don't be be surprised if your plat teammates flame you for lurking on jet. Let's start on bind with one of my favorite players to watch, Xander. We'll start in the pre-round. Xander comps to his team that since the enemy is often fast rotating, they should take B long and TP to A while he lurks. Can you guys just right, go up long and take that control and just TP? Honestly, I think they just rotate. Xander they hears the there. brim drop a smoke showers and starts looking for the cypher cam to deny info. He walls up to bait the cam and destroys it. He makes his presence known short, so he fakes running back to market to regroup with his team and throws a common viper orb u-haul. Xander continues his lurk through showers as his team continues to show presence be long. He diligently clears each angle from showers and then finally hears cypher drop from bench, netting him a free pick. Since his teammates are Radiants and pros, they immediately know to TP the second Xander gets the pick A. In your elo, you'll probably have to beg your teammates to TP, so just something to keep in mind. Xander takes backside control and knows the Viper was playing A. His info and intuition are correct. Xander goes on to ult CT and molly it off, preventing the defenders from retaking unless they go heaven. A perfect lurk from Xander. The next great lurk play we have here is from none other than Fnatic's IGL, Boaster. From the start of the round, Boaster hides his presence A as his team creates a ton of noise B while also investing ultimates onto site, further selling the fact that they are hitting B. This causes the A player to rotate off site and Boaster makes sure to calm this info to his team so they cancel the B hit and head through mid to A. He left A, left A. Yeah, uh, three, three B, three B, three B. KO, Killjoy, and Slova. He positions himself at the door and makes sure not to get too greedy with the lurk. One to heaven. You know what? I'll just let him explain his thought process on this one. Take it away, Boaster. Generally, you just say, generally when people leave A main, they normally go to fight short. So you just have to be aware that if A main is empty, they could be one hiding on site. But in this case, because we were faking B so hard, they're not going to be playing on the site. Well, they shouldn't be playing on site. Then what I could have done is pushed all the way to tree. But because my teammates stopped making pressure, I didn't want to keep pushing because they could be checking behind and kill me. But if he does end up walking back through this door, I get him in the side of the head, shut the door, and then I have A control. As soon as I get a fight here, they're going to be like, it's A, and they're going to rotate, and then they're going to beat us to the site. But because I didn't make any noise, then we're Gucci. I know I said only one lurk play for each map, but the idea of this next one is just too good. Here here is our honorable mention from Kempeki. Kempeki starts his lurk early in the round by smoking mid and scaling up cat right behind the boxes. Just to make them push me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get him with the uh, right He walked off cat. Unfortunately, Kempeki gets picked by the omen who dry walks out cat. Kempeki suspects a stream sniper here because there was no indication he was in this position and it's very uncommon to check this spot. Regardless, this position allows him to get info for his team by listening to enemy rotations. 
Since I had the pleasure of getting coached by Kampeki, I asked him what the full idea was behind this lurk. Given the team comp, the optimal play would look something like this. The Yoro makes noise B main to get the defenders to shift towards B. The A players execute onto A, Kampeki smokes door, lurks through tree into heaven to get a pick. Ideally, he wouldn't have to put this smoke in mid because any mid smokes could indicate either an A split or some attacker positioned in mid. So by not smoking, having Sovadar mid, and gambling the walk up cat, Kampeki can get the most unexpected positioning. If you've played any amount of ranked on Haven, you'll probably recognize this lurk that FNS is about to pull off. It starts with some mid doors aggression out of the garage by the enemy's raise and fate. They know to be careful of this play because they had a bad time on the first round of attack. Oh, oh, oh. You best, brother. It's all good. They call an A hit as FNS takes his space up mid. In the previous few rounds this half, the defenders had no presence B, so FNS used that info to start his lurk. He also knows two are playing garage, meaning B could be free. He comms that he has B and tells his teammates to take their time so he can get a pick. I'm in B. Time, time. He sees the fade ulting from spawn and kills Killjoy who was attempting to ult. Huge impact on this lurk. Unfortunately, he dies to the Rays who flanked from mid, but the info he gained from the team is way more valuable. Now they know the Rays' location and they spot Omen Heaven. Eventually, they go on to win the round. This lurk route from mid through B can be super strong, especially when your team hits A. This is because the little cubby outside B almost always goes unchecked as the garage and C defender rotate through B to help their team retake A. You don't always want to push up through B to A link unless you have a good read on the defenders, but it's definitely an option to consider. Next up, we have one of the raddiest of lurks, courtesy of Som. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't recommend sitting on your cam on the opposite side of the map while your teammates hit a site, but it can be strong in the right situation. If you notice the enemy constantly rotating through the zips or attack side bridge, this setup could thwart that play. Using Cypher's cam, Som is able to see any potential rotations by the defenders through the attack side bridge. This setup does a few things. One, the rotating defender is tagged by the cam and decides the rotate through is too risky. Two, since there are trap wires on both sides of the zip line, defenders cannot flank and are forced to rotate through their spawn or reveal their locations. And three, it allows you to lurk into enemy territory as your teammates fight for A. This lurk worked so well that Sam was able to deliver the finishing blow with nothing but his knife. Now he thinks I'm close, but little does he know, I'm behind him, and little does he yeah, yeah! Beautiful. Our next lurk comes from Les, the Viper player for Loud. Before this round we're about to watch, Les made his presence known at A every single round. Keep in mind he was solo A the majority of these rounds to condition the defenders and keep the threat of an A hit constant. Les used the same Viper wall and orb to take control of A main. On the majority of rounds, Les saw Rays playing ramp and Breach playing sight. Most of the rounds this half, they invested a Boombot and a Concuss into Les's position, so when they didn't do this for round 18, Les the decided it was time to lurk and caught the enemy lacking. Even though he had conditioned the enemy with his A presence, for whatever reason, this round they decided to deviate. Les uses one of the most powerful abilities in the game, his ears, and knows the chamber is screens. He quickly disposes of the trash and reroutes back toward ramp. He once again proves that less is more and eliminates the raise. Now his team has free reign over A. Lurking takes discipline and Les demonstrates that extremely well here. Here's a great example of a more aggressive lurk done by one of the best lurkers in the game, Nats. I saved the best for the last two for a reason. During this round, Nats team 5 stacks mid. They get a couple picks B link and head through connector. Nats picks up a rifle outside of art and starts to lurk. Nats is one of the best when it comes to reading his opponent and here's a perfect example. Okay, he is definitely in front of this one. As his team continues to pressure mid, he walks into the smoke just before it drops and kills the unsuspecting Ashra. But wait, there's more. That's right, this is a two for one lurk special. After the pick, they know to head to A since Killjoy is confirmed a B player. Nats wastes no time and begins his second lurk. He peeks through mid doors and finishes off the Killjoy. Pearl has some strong lurk spots in mid as Nats demonstrates, but it really comes down to reading your enemy and how they're playing each round. Since Nats showed presence in art after he picks off Ashra, the Killjoy never suspects a lurk back through mid. In fact, the Killjoy believes one could be playing connector since the whole team ran through there moments ago. 
Since I'm a big Nats fanboy, we're gonna watch another one of his masterful lurks, this time on Lotus. This is a good time to go for a lurk play since they are on an eco round. A good rule of thumb is to avoid lurk plays when you are on gun advantage. This is because if you die while lurking, the enemy will now have a phantom or vandal, giving them much better odds of winning the round. Well, only breach. Wait, 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 wait. Only breach. Nats notice that there is only a breach playing A and comms that information to his teammates who are C. Since he suspects only breach A, he tells his team to come back to A as they've already made their presence known C. Nats takes space up A main and waits for his team while holding stairs. He doesn't want to get into a position where he can't get support from his team anymore. Patience is key here. After his teammates group up with him, he tells them to just walk onto site. Let me walk in front of Get full tree. Oh, that's not good. Nats puts his wall up to sneak up to the rope and take control of top, but unfortunately the gecko ruins the plan by throwing his dizzy. Regardless, Nats finds the timing on breach and finishes the lurk. This specific wall and orb combo is really solid for playing solo and lurking up A. The orb allows you to cross to rubble and the wall cuts up A main, allowing you to scale up to the ult orb and work A main. The end of the wall gives you this tight space by the rope to sneak up to top as well. Great job Nats, good luck in esports. <laughs> Good luck in your sport. And that's going to be it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see from me next. Subscribe for more guides like this one and check out this one next for more. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.